And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Check this out. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Well, 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 look at this. This from USA Today. Most people today reject the notion that couples who live together before marriage are more likely to get divorced. This is according, according to a Gallup poll of 1,007 adults. How they came up with that number of 1,007, I have no idea. Almost half, 49%, said living together makes divorce less likely. 13% said it makes no difference. Just 31% said living together makes divorce more likely. 7% had no opinion. Christopher Sekulich, 37, of Melvindale, Michigan. How did USA Today find Christopher? He said, if you're, I always wonder when you see these stories in the paper and they, they have a quote from some person in the middle of nowhere, like, how do they decide to pick that person to interview? Probably went to college with the person who wrote the article. Says here, if you're living with someone, you actually get to know somebody more than you would not living with them. And they had to go all the way to Melvindale, Michigan to find that eloquent quote, that pithy assessment. Respondents also appeared open-minded. I'm sorry. Similarly, most respondents don't worry about the effect on children of living in a cohabiting household. Is cohabiting or cohabitating? Does anybody know or care? 47% said it makes no difference. 12% said it would have a positive effect. Respondents also appeared open-minded on whether unmarried couples can have a committed relationship. Half the sample was asked if an unmarried couple who have lived together for five years is as committed as a couple married five years. 57% said yes, they are. Okay. Ricky Lockhart, 56, of Sacramento was married at 18 and didn't live with her ex-husband first. She says, you didn't do things like that back then. That's what everybody expected. You got married. There you go. Now, first of all, I don't believe in cohabitation or marriage. I really don't. I do believe that a mother, a father, and the children living together is best for the children. I'll just say that. But uh, guys do not benefit from that. So a man who decides to get married or live with a woman and have children with her, that man is putting the children ahead of himself because, believe me, it's not in his best self-interest to do that. No doubt about it. But I've got to say, that if you insist on getting married, I do believe cohabitation beforehand is critical. It's critical. Because you need to find out whether you could stand to be around that bitch 24-7. And the only way to find out is to move in. 
preferably boys, you moving in with her. That's right, you moving in with her. That is the way you do it. Because that way, if things don't work out, you're not stuck with a lease. You're not stuck trying to get her to move out when she doesn't want to move out. You move into her place, and then if things don't work out, you move out of her place. Also, you don't have to buy furniture. You don't have to buy decorative items. You don't have to put your name on the lease. You don't have to buy a house. Wherever she's living, that's where you go. And uh, see if you can stand it. And if you can, fantastic. Still don't think you should get married. But I do think cohabitation is important. And uh, you see that. They've asked people. And they think that uh, getting, uh, getting into a living together relationship before getting married does not make divorce more likely. That's insane. And I agree. It doesn't. It doesn't. So while I am opposed to men moving in and living with their girlfriends, while I'm opposed to marriage, I do believe if you insist on getting married, which is stupid to begin with, you're better off living with her first. What do you think? Tom, 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 Tom. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. A poll by Gallup for USA Today says that most people reject the idea that couples who live together before marriage are more likely to get divorced. Joe on the Tom Likas Show, hello. How are you doing, Mr. Likas? How you doing? I'm doing just fine. Just got off work right here. About to uh, pop open a beer and uh, relax for the rest of the evening. Okay. So, yeah, I wanted to comment about uh, the little poll that uh, you're talking about. All right. And uh, I've been been, uh, living with my girl for about uh, two years now. And, Why? Uh, I never. I'm sorry. Why? Oh, I. You know what? I have no idea, man. I listen to your show all the time, and I ask myself all the time, you know, why? Why? Why are you doing this? I really don't know why, man. I can't. It's there's still um, time to get out, Joe. Oh yeah, definitely, man. I have no kids. You know what I mean? I have a. I have a very good job. Uh, I'm about to start my company here in a little bit. Uh, yeah, you're right. You know, I could get out. Instantly, but I'm locked up with this lease until uh, about a, about uh, next March. So until then, I gotta ride it out, if you know what I mean. Well, <laughs> uh, does she know you want to leave? Uh, no, not really. Well, I mean, she senses it every now and then. I get get in these moods and uh, let her kind of feel that you know I really don't want to be here. You know, because because if she gets that idea, she might get knocked up. Uh, she ain't getting knocked up by me, man. I rolled my gym hat on 24-7. Does she try to take it off? Uh, not at all, man. I do, I do all the work, man. <laughs> Just making sure. Some of them reached out there and yank it off. Oh, no. I, I also made sure she went and, uh, got on some form of, uh, contraceptive. I listened to you, and, uh, I told her pretty much, you ain't getting it unless you go and get something. And you see, you she know? was not a contraceptive, which means she wants to have a baby. Oh, yeah. She wouldn't have gotten it unless I told her, Tom. Did she uh, admit that to you? Uh, no, she didn't. I yeah. don't think she would. <laughs> well, trust me, it's true. What woman would, would admit it to you? <laughs> uh, though the one, well, I keep saying it. The ones who are not on birth control are the ones who want to have a baby. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. That's a bad sign. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, does she talk about marriage? Uh, not at all. She knows uh, that's the last thing on my mind, <laughs> if, if on my mind at all. <laughs> so what was her reason for wanting to move in with you? Don't tell me because she loves you. Uh, <laughs> you said it, man. <laughs> Don't say that because, uh, you know, she was trying to save on rent or get you to pay the electric bill or make oh, her no, car no, payments no, or something. Hey, we divided, we divided in half, in half, and I ain't, 
I ain't paying no more than she is. That's the bottom line. Has you she know? tried to alter that formula? Uh, if anything, she'll be paying some of my bills, Tom. <laughs> really? Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. I learned from the best, man. The men in my family knew what they were doing. They, they trained me well. That's good. Well, you know, you've got time now to plan your escape. Yes, sir. And you know what? You're 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 the man that's just molding it and finessing it even more, man. So you know, it'd be, power to you. When you get more to be about three you. months before the end of the lease, it's time to start shopping for a place. Yep. And the you. day the lease ends is the time that you move to your new place, ready to go. Utilities turned on. <laughs> furniture bought. Yes. Uh, everything ready to go. Internet uh, in place. Everything. Yes. That's what you have to do. Yes, sir. And uh, make sure you know how much uh, li- adv- how much notice you have to give the landlord. Yep. Uh, so that you give him, you know, 30 or 60 or whatever days notice he needs so that that lease doesn't automatically renew. And then you're trapped for a longer time. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep track of that one. I would if I were you. Yep. Hey, Tom, do me a favor, man. What's that? Take me out with a fat bong toe. There's a fatty, baby. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Jason on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Uh, yeah, I was calling to comment on this, this little um, subject you got going on. Um, I don't know where these people come up with these weird um, accusations that living with somebody um, later on down the line is going to make your marriage, you know, perfect. What if later on down the line she's down there screwing somebody? And are you going to go be like, oh, I lived with this person previous, so uh, I'm just going to stay with her. I mean, I really don't get how people come up with these, you know, accusations. Well, uh, yeah, you understand the, the risk you take when you move in with a woman. Do you understand what the risks are? Yeah, I know. I've, <laughs> I've, I've been married for about three years, and I've lived with my wife. Um, that was when she was my girlfriend. Why are you married? Because <laughs> that's Fair. not a that's not a reason. <laughs> no, it's not. A- Why are you married? I'm in love, Tom. Come on. Oh, oh stop it! <laughs> you know what? You can. It. By the way, you, all right, you're in love. Why did you have to sign a contract? <laughs> I, I wasn't. I wasn't um, up to up to par with you when uh, my first got married. My How long? Wait, you're 25. Yeah. How long have you been married? About three years. You got married at 22. Yep. So you actually, knocked. You must one. have knocked her up. Actually, 21. No, we had our kid after we got married. Oh my God! You're serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Why Why are you getting married and having kids at such a young age? It doesn't make any sense. I just didn't you know. But you don't but know? Wait, you don't know? I mean, I don't know. No, I don't know why I got married. Why Why did you get married and have kids at such a young age? It was, a, it was my decision. What is the rush? I don't know. It wasn't really no rush. It was just something Well, it is a rush because yeah, that's awfully young. Yep. I could still go out. I could still have my son, you know. What? I enjoy I enjoy living. I enjoy spending time with my kids, you know. And Nothing what kind is- of fun are you going out and having? Are you getting laid on the side, too? Well, no. <laughs> well, you're saying go out and have my fun. What does that mean? Well, if I, if, I, if I wanted to go get laid on the side, I wouldn't have got married. Well, I could go out and have my fun. I don't know what that phrase means. I can go out and enjoy, have my fun, do whatever I want, go to sporting events, you know. Do whatever, go to clubs. And you're going to clubs by yourself? Uh, nope. I usually don't like the club scene, but, you know. Well, what do you mean? Why are you telling me that? I can go to clubs. What? What's the purpose of going to clubs? Go have fun. You like dancing? Like... Is that why you like dancing, Jason? 
Not really. Well, then what, if uh, you can't pick up chicks, wait, let me understand this. If you can't pick up chicks and you don't like dancing, what would be the purpose of going to a club? Um, getting my drink on. Couldn't you do that at a bar? Yeah. That was just that was just some of the things you know I do, but I don't really like the club scene. You know, I don't like really getting dressed up and doing all that. You know, but yeah. But I was what I'm trying to say is uh, I don't really think that that topic is you know it's true because you know it's not always peaches and cream with me and my wife. You know, but it's not bad. But just making that assumption is like I don't know. Making what, what assumption? I don't understand what you're talking about. About saying that you, if you live with your um, a female prior to marriage, that life is going to be, you know, perfect. You know, I don't think life is going to be perfect. I think getting married, life is going to be rotten. <laughs> you should uh, know, but uh, I, I, I do know. But I do believe that living with someone can prevent you from ending up with someone who is absolutely wrong for you. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I don't agree with you 100% at times, but I do understand that, you know, you do know a lot. So, just, I tend to listen to you every day. Just don't really follow the like it's one-on-one, you know? Well, clearly you don't. <laughs> but yeah. don't worry, yeah. like everybody, you'll be back to me when, when all is said and done, when things don't work out. This is where you'll come. <laughs> Uh, hopefully not, but, you know. This is where they all come eventually. Yeah, I hear them. I hear them every day. Tom, I should have listened to you. Never did. Uh, can you take me out on compass style? Of course I can. Here you go, Jason. Biatch. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Allison on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Hi. I have to disagree with you a little bit today. Why? Well, um, I studied uh, couples therapy when I was in college. And if you, most people don't do what you say they should do. And they, before they get married, if they move in, they sign a lease together, they buy furniture together, and then they're least likely to kind of break it off. And they'll continue on to get married and then realize that it really wasn't what they wanted and then they'll end up getting divorced. That's why what that article was probably... Well, that's why I tell the guys, if you insist on getting married, then you should move in with her first. And if you move in with her first, move into her place. Absolutely. She's but already I'll got a lease. She's already got a place. Go live in her place because I want to tell you something. The way that place is decorated, that's what you're going to be living with. The right. animals that live at her place, that's what's going to be living with you. Right. And, I mean, the people that are getting divorced, too, it's people who haven't talked about getting married before they move in. So if you talk about getting married and then you move in together and then you get married, it's you're likely to stay together. But it's just, you know, deciding to move in. Well, I have always said that, uh, you know... <laughs> uh, you know, I am 51 years old. I'll be 52 years old soon. And I have always said that back in the 70s, living together was referred to as trial marriage. Like, the only time you moved in with somebody was when you were thinking about getting married to them. Right. So you moved in with them to see how you liked each other. Right. I mean, you shouldn't just move in if you're not serious about doing it. Now people move in together because they want to save money on rent. Right. Or because yeah. they want to have sex every night. They don't feel like spending bus fare to go to their girlfriend's place. You can have every night and not live together. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> okay, that's all I wanted to say, Tom. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, darling. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jesse on the Tom Likas show. Father. Son. Pleasure. Yes, it is. <laughs> Long time, first time, sir. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, put my two cents in and say that uh, me and my girlfriend, we lived together. Been together two years. Why'd you do that? Because uh, I'm one of those old-fashioned cats, father. Old-fashioned? Old-fashioned. I'm going to move in, get married, have a bunch of kids, you know? Oh, boy. 
<laughs> no, but hey, we did it the right way. And it's funny you just said move into her place first because I did that for six months. It had to do with a job transfer. Economy kind of hit me. So we ended up getting a place together. And I do, I'm a strong believer of moving in before marriage. It's moving into her place. Uh, I did, but then we got our own place, so we're both on the lease. <sighs> That's what she I wanted. Say, there's a few exceptions to That's the That's what there's she a- wanted. She wanted your name on the lease. <laughs> hey, both of our names. So you locked in. <laughs> Anyways, I got to say. It's it's pretty good with fifty fifty. So just put my two cents in. That yeah, until things there. don't work out and you're stuck with that lease. Well, actually, uh, we're heading back down south to San Diego uh, next month. So why is that? Where her parents live? <laughs> no, her parents are out east, and I actually was down there for four and a half years and transferred up to L.A. with a job that kind of sucked. Me, whatever. So you're going to San Diego for what? A better job? Yeah, better job. I'm going to go back to school and uh, see how things work out down there with her and I. Do you have a college degree? No, sir, I don't. Uh, so you left college because you had a girlfriend? No, I did the whole one-way ticket to Cali from uh, New York, buddy. Oh, boy. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Oh, Jesus. Well, I'm a farm boy, though, not a, not, a, not a city boy. Are you from western New York today? Uh, Central, Syracuse. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So That's why yeah. it took you over two minutes to mention the words New York. <laughs> Normally, hey, man, the, average not, time, hey. the average time it takes about nine seconds. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, for the, for the New York New Yorker, huh? It takes about nine seconds for someone to go, and, and this is how the call always goes, by the way. Yeah, Tom, love your show. Uh, I just got out here from New York. Oh, look at that, six seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I run into a lot of them, and I, I ask them why they even came here. So I, I enjoy Southern California. I like the weather, but, uh, you know, you guys ain't got no good beats out here. Hey, the food, I got to say, I got to say, it's, I, I like East Coast food, but just because I haven't had it in a while. It's been about three three times going back. What exactly is, what what is Syracuse food now? Buffalo wings? You know it. We have buffalo wings here. They're the only, honestly, the only place I've had wings that, about that size is a sushi joint. All right, so you want to eat like a pig, like people up in upstate New York, and... Uh, <laughs> Because you have to put those rolls of fat on for the seven months of winter you have every year. Yeah, that's right, man. Meat and potatoes all the way. Well, you don't need those big wings when you're living here. <laughs> yeah, but you know it's the water that makes the dough different. The oh, bread. Stop it. <laughs> if Come that on, were you true, know, you're in what Albany, right? If that were true, if that were true, people would be sending barrels of water out here and making a fortune sending it. Hey, I tell you. You got to You got to You got to give in just a little bit. I'm not giving so in. It's different. You're, I'm not. You're, you're you're from Albany, no? I actually I'm from New York City originally. Uh, that's right, that's right, that's right. I lived in Albany for three years. Worked on the radio, but I'm from uh, New York City. Right on, right on. And I've had my fill. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't go back for about three years, and I just went back a couple weeks ago. How was that? It was great. Went to went to the farm and uh, rode four wheelers, shot guns, ate a bunch of home cooked meals, and then got out of there in about three days. See, you even you can't stand it anymore. Oh no, absolutely not. I'll never go back. I just uh, you know five year five and a half years in Southern California, and uh, I've been home about three times. I, I guess I got a little homesick after three years. Oh boy! Now you go to and you have no college degree. Oh, well, I'm planning on going back. Yeah, I know. I'm planning. I'm planning on getting the lead. I'm planning on getting the lead in the next Rush story. Hour movie. Huh? Huh? I said I'm planning on getting the lead in the next Rush Hour sequel. <laughs> hey, I'm sure they'd give it to you. <laughs> Don't be so sure. Tom Likes. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. 
The 1 800 5 800 Talk. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Gallup took a poll for USA Today that says that most people, despite what the so called experts say, reject the idea that couples who live together before marriage are more likely to get divorced. You know, that's that's what the so-called experts have said. By the way, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> Anything that ends a marriage. Hopefully we can end marriage in our lifetime. Maybe we need to have a telethon. I think so. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Joe. Boy, do I have an interesting story for you. I should have been your uh, son and your student a long time ago. No uh, doubt about time, it. First time, long time, Tom. Yes. Well, I have a very, very interesting story that I think a lot of your uh, fellow sons and students out there should listen to my example, what, what is happening to me at the moment. Uh, let's see. Okay, long story short, uh, I'll wrap it up, is that uh, when I was 16, I met a beautiful, beautiful girl from the Philippines, an island girl, looked just like Salma Hayek, identical, half Spanish, half Filipina. Really? Beautiful, waist size zero, and she was a Casablanca model. And I mo and I met her at the uh, at the Ford commercial shoot. Uh, I was escorting a friend over there, and I was waiting in the lobby. And long story short, I met her. We exchanged numbers, and she was five years older than me at the time, and I was only sixteen. She was twenty one, and I lied about my age to try to get some tail, of course. And uh, I told her I was nineteen, and I went to uh, L.A. and got the whole fake driver's license, and I did everything just to prove to that uh, for a year so she wouldn't uh, really consider to date me. Well, long story short there, uh, when I was 18, uh, I got married um, uh, at age 18. Uh, mistake number one. Mistake number two, made my first million dollars, became uh, a first millionaire at the age of 20 and a half. And uh, 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 opened my first business up, sold out to a dot com back in the dot com phase, and uh, and cashed out for a million bucks. And then uh, did a career change at age twenty and a half. I became a cop uh, here in San Diego. And uh, when I became a cop um, at the graduation from the police academy, at the end, the day before graduation, uh, we were given statistics. And here is something that I don't know if you ever heard of this, but we uh, guys in law enforcement are guaranteed 2.7 divorces in a 20-year career. That's an average divorce rate of police officers uh, with a 20-year career of divorces. 2.7. I don't know how they got the 0.7, but that's the uh, statistics. Okay. Uh, mistake number. Number two was that I transferred all my, uh, at the time, had my first house, cars, everything. I transferred everything into my, at the time, my wife's name because as cops, we're not protected by the Good Samaritan law. So if something happens uh, while you're on duty and we can get sued through the department and also we can personally get sued uh, and we can lose our shirt. So at the time, yeah, I was in love and beautiful girl and uh, we were married and uh, I put everything in her name. And the very beginning. And next thing you know, mistake number three. I uh, bought a bunch of homes in Southern California. I had a total of nine houses that I had, including the one that I lived in. Uh, invested heavily uh, in rental income properties and also cashed out some of those properties and bought several franchise businesses in cash. Mistake number four. All of that was put into my wife's name for the protection because I was a police officer at the time uh, as my full-time job and was doing my side businesses. Well, years passed, and after uh, accruing all this wealth, um, everything was in her name, and the wealth was built up to $4.4 million net. And uh, this got into her name, Why? This was all in her name because I was an active duty police officer at the time, and I could not have, or I was advised not to have any of these properties or businesses in my name because if I were to get sued, an example was, if I were to revive somebody on a call and they didn't want to be revived, uh, do not resuscitate, the family or that person could sue me for everything that Couldn't I Couldn't you just have, like, a homeowner's insurance or an umbrella policy or something? Yeah, I had a policy. I had all the policy through USA Insurance, Top of Line Insurance Company, and everything. But through my uh, advisor and also the sweet talking of my wife at the time, said, "Hey, we should have everything uh, safely secured." So I only had at the time one house, one car in my name while I was an active duty cop. 
So, um, so here she is raking everything in, and next thing you know, um, and, and here's a very good point for the listeners, too, to be aware out there, is that my wife was not a U.S. citizen at the time. Uh, that the reason why I got married at age 18 was her visa expired. So she said, oh, you know, I have to go back to the Philippines, and I only came here for school, but, you know, I love you, and we can have a long-distance relationship and everything, and, of course, you know, I hit the bait, and I said, what am I, what can I do to keep you here? And uh, she said, we can get married, and then I, then I can stay with you forever, and, uh, and that's how I ended up getting married at age 18. So uh, along with that, later, about six years later, her mother, her father, her grandmother, and her sister, uh, I ended up making them all U.S. citizens, petitioned for them through the INS, paid for the attorney the full nine yards. Oh. Uh, Why know. couldn't you just hit it and quit it? That's, that's what I should have done. But I was young, and uh, like my oh. like say, I was young. Had uh, a very like, cut, let's career. cut to the chase. How did this end up? So, anyways, long story short is uh, nine houses, four franchise businesses, uh, and eight cars later. Um, the, right now, I'm going through a divorce. Uh, eight months after all her family got their citizenship, everything that they needed, her mother and father were, I bought them a house, car, set them all up and everything. Fool, fool, fool. I, absolutely, absolutely. You know, being the son, you know, being the son. And, and when you have money and power. Uh, but you're not the duty. son. You're not the, you were not the son. You were the son-in-law. Exactly, the son-in-law, exactly, and trying to rescue and save them. And eight months after pretty much I've done everything that I could, she filed for divorce. And um, and now I'm in the process of liquidating every asset and fighting for the very, very properties and the business that I had through the court system. And here is the big mistake number five, vagina money. I was married 10 years and four months. Remember, uh, I remember uh, you talked about the 10-year gut check, right, Tom? That's right. That's right. Well, for the listeners out there, be ve- that's a very good advice. If you are married nine years and nine months out there, time to do a gut check because you're not going to believe. My, okay, this is on a national radio, and uh, and I'll tell you, with an income of $30,000 a month, that's what I make, thirty grand a month, Okay. With that kind of income, you're looking at with uh, with the splitting of the assets and all the you know, everything that you have. I'm looking at for the next at least five years a commitment of four thousand six hundred and eight. How long were you married? Ten years and four months. You're twenty nine. I'm twenty nine. You years got old. married at what age? I got I got 18? married when I was eighteen. Idiot, 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 idiot. Yep. So, so, and then, and we were married for, uh, we were together total for over 12 years and everything, but the alimony and, uh, of course, uh, two kids later, you're looking at a pretty hefty payment of $4,680 a month, uh, with two kids and alimony combined out there. And that's only at 10 years and four months of marriage. And, uh, if you have. So you're paying, let's review. You, you're paying about fifty-six thousand dollars a year, which you can't write off. Which I cannot write 56, off. Fifty-six thousand dollars a year. Actually, Tom, uh, let's reiterate that point. That point is fifty-six thousand net, net, not gross, net cash a year. Right. Plus, so plus, t- are those houses paid off? The house of her mother and father, or whatever. The house that she is now living in now, uh, it's a six-bedroom, four-bath home, 4,200 square feet in a very prominent neighborhood in North County, San Diego. Uh, Dino knows where it's at, but I don't want to mention it. That house is paid off. Why did you mention it then? What's that? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. And then also the three-bedroom, two-bath home that I bought for her mother and her father and her young sister and grandmother, that house is paid off. Good work there, Ace. Yep, yep. So, anyways, uh, for the listeners out there, this divorce and marriage, like you talked about last week, about being a corporation, being a business, when you're in an income bracket, like, uh, I don't know, I mean, a lot of listeners, I don't know what the demographics are, but uh, my income is about $30,000 a month uh, doing what I do, and uh, I'm looking at close to $5,000 a month in payment uh, for at least locked in through the courses for the next five years. And then just the kids alone, we're looking at about thirty six, thirty seven hundred dollars a month until the age of 18. Good yes, work sir. there. Hey, Larry, what did you want to say to Joe? 
Yeah, I, I just got to know, if California's a community property state, why are you putting it all in her name? If you get sued on the job, they're going to listen no. to the lawsuit anyway. No, that's the thing is that, yeah, you're absolutely right. And that's the very uh, basis that I'm fighting in the court right now with my attorney is that, yes, it's a 50-50 community state. But at the time, I signed everything over because I was an active duty police officer at the time. Uh, we but went uh, so that California I was to get community sued. property? Yeah, they could sue you for, uh, they could sue the police department and everybody under the umbrella, including the police officer. Uh, but couldn't they, wait, 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 he's, what he's saying is since it's a community property state, if you were sued, she'd be sued also, right? That's what I'm fighting for in court. It just started right now, my court but, but, is in September. So you don't even know if that's the case. The case is, is that, yeah, I, the point of the case is that I have to fight for my very own property because everything is 100% in her name. Oh, I, you know I, what? I'm getting a headache. I can't take this anymore. I can't take it. Jesus. Oh, Christ. Alan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, first time, long time, man. Thank you. I, I just wanted to agree with you on that subject, man. That uh, yeah, I, I think guys should live with a chick. If, if you know, marriage ain't for everyone. If if they're gonna get married to a chick, you need to see what you're getting yourself involved in. Uh, I, I've been married, you know, too long. I made that mistake, but you know, it's working for me. It is, you know, it, all the guys out there, they just need to realize what you're walking into. Well, if you insist on getting married, I think it's important to at least uh, move into her place. And see how she, by the way, if you ever want to know how she lives, don't let her move into your place. Yeah. You move into her place. Absolutely. You know, see how she lives. Well, you know, it, it works for me, man. I mean, my old lady takes care of me. You know, I still have my son. And I have three kids. I mean, I, I love my kids to death. But, man, like you say, they, they pull you down. They pull you back. That's right. Exactly. And you're and so young, and you have your whole life ahead of you. You could have had kids 10 years from now. Yeah, I'm only 27. My oldest is freaking, he's 10. What was you the know? rush? I, I got to look at it as a positive, though, you know. No, you don't. When he gets, old, when I he don't. gets older, me and him will be hanging out and, you know, pulling chicks together. You know, we, we I got I to gotta show him right, you know. Maybe I'll introduce him to you and your show and play the cards right. Unless you have more kids. Yeah, no, heck no. We're, we're done, man. I, How do I'm you know? Gonna, I'm going to get snipped and when? get fixed. When? Yeah, my, I don't know. I, yeah, I, yeah, I you don't know. Out. She'll get knocked up again before you get around to it. Yeah, if it ain't me, it's going to be the gardener. So she wants to have more kids. Nah, she she's done. We, we Why has she got the tubal ligation? Uh, she, she, we need to figure something out here at first. But you season. haven't. No. And that means it'll happen again. Yeah. Well, I already made this mistake three times. The fourth thing, and I heard that bad. Oh, so you're already prepared for that. No, you ain't never prepared. For Why don't kid. you do something about it? I, I'm. How I, many I'm do you need? Do something about it. You know. No, no. Do something here. about it tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. That'd be fine and great, but, you know, there's no way, you know, a working guy, we're working, mon you know, Monday through Saturday, there's no way. Uh, do it on your lunch hour. Your it's, lunch an hour. Outpa it's an outpatient procedure. I, I don't think I'd be the one to get fixed. It'd be her. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's going to happen to you again. The Tom Likas Show. 97.1 Free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station.